Hello friends, welcome to another live stream lesson with me, Stu Fuchs and Ukulele Zen. How are you doing? Today we're going to be talking about one thing that I think is a, a really, maybe one of the best triplet strum patterns, and that's why I'm calling this the best triplet strum. It's a big claim, uh, but we're going to be getting into this idea of this new pattern of down, up, down, down, up, down, and why this trains your hand and how it can have so many great musical applications. But first, let me say hello to some folks in the chat. Can you hear me? Please let me know in the live chat if you can hear me and if you can see me okay, if all the tech is working great so we can get started. I'm so glad that you decided to join me for this live stream lesson. These live stream lessons are broadcast the first Sunday of every month at my YouTube channel, Ukulele Zen. Today is not the first Sunday of the month. I'm offering this today because the first Sunday of next month, I will be at the Omega Institute presenting two retreat programs, one on didgeridoo and then my five-day ukulele zen retreat. I can see that there are a lot of folks in the house who will be attending and I'm so excited about that. I can't wait to be with you. So I want to let you know that the first Sunday of next month, July 2nd, I'll be there, not here. That's why I'm here right now. I'm glad you're here right now. How are you feeling? I see that there are folks from as far away as Romania. Razvan, I'm glad you're here. Uh, we got folks from Edmonton, Alberta, Tennessee is in the house, Asheville, North Carolina is in the house. Hey, Kevin, glad you're here. Thanks for letting me know the sound is good. All right, let's get right into today's lesson. The best triplet strum? Hmm, let's find out. In the description, the video description down below, you'll find links to two other triplet strum lessons that I made recently. All of my lessons, of course, I want to present something that's practical, that has a musical application, and something that's easy to follow along with. So my goal is to present in a way that beginning beginner players can follow along, and more advanced players will have some, uh, some more um, nutrition for them to grow. Hope you're doing well. Let's jump in. The triplet is when we divide a beat into three parts. And very often that's done with this type of stroke. All right, so what I'm doing is if I was to play the beat, one, two, a three, a four, a one, two, I'd be dividing it into three parts if I wanted to make a triplet to sound like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And there's many different finger motions that can work well for that. During today's lesson, we're going to be working with a pattern that is down, up, down, down, up, down. I know it looks like dud, dud, but <laughs> this pattern is not a dud, I promise you. We're going to be getting into this today. And uh, so let's just hang out with a couple of uh, musical applications I'd like to demonstrate for you how this can be used. First of all, I'll be showing you all this in this lesson. You can use it as a George Formby style. All right, so there's all different kinds of ways that this down up down pattern can be used. We'll be breaking it down. You can use it also to create a Latin groove. all of this. So if you haven't already, you can download this two-page PDF at the link down below. It's available for members of the Patreon community, but everything you need to follow along this lesson is going to be right here on the screen. If you want to support the community and get uh, support this channel, join the community, you get all kinds of cool perks with your membership. And before we jump in, I just want to say that at 2 p.m. today, the monthly jazz lesson will be posted and it's going to be a really nice solo I made
made a version of Mr. Sandman tablature and a full lesson for members who are at the jazz chord solo tier. All right, let's get into the lesson. So far, we covered in the previous two triplet lessons. There are links to those two lessons in the description below. They're totally free. There's YouTube videos for you to enjoy. And we went through two different kinds of strokes. One was the who. All right. The other was a bluesy triplet that used these two fingers. Excuse me, I keep tapping my microphone here. Today is another triplet pattern. Let's take a look at it right here. We're going to be playing down, up, down, and then it starts again, down, up, down. Now, the technical benefits of this, why this is so good for your hand, is that as you, as you practice this pattern, you're forcing your hand to be more flexible. Join in with me right now. This is the time for you to you know, interact with me in time. And if you have questions, you can drop them in the chat. Just put a whole bunch of question marks before and after your question so it pops out and I can answer your question. Now, as we make the, this particular triplet strum, I recommend you use your index finger. Touch your index finger with your thumb, okay? And what we're going to be playing is this pattern. Down, up, down. That third downstroke, make it a bounce. So I'm just bouncing off the fourth and the third string. This, of course, works fantastic on the low G as well. Down, up, bounce. I'm going to show you on this high G for the first musical example of the George Formby strum. You need a, it's good to use a high G for that. Don't matter what tuning you're in, join me and let's practice. Look at your hand and say it out loud. Are you ready? Down, up, down. That third one is a bounce. Let's call it bounce. Ready? Let's do two in a row. Down, up, bounce. Again. Down, up, bounce. Again. Down, up, bounce. One more. Cool, let's take a pause right here and check in with your wrist. How flexible does it feel? When you bounce, you, I recommend that you pretend this fourth and third string, it's like a trampoline, you're just bouncing off of it. And see how my hand kind of ends up a little higher than the strings. That bounce strum is really going to be key. Let's do two in a row, but this time without a pause. Please watch me. I'm going to demonstrate it first, and then we'll join in together. We'll hold down a C chord, and I'll demonstrate first. So notice it's down, up, down. It bounces, which prepares the next down, up, down pattern. Are you ready? With me, let's do two in a row. One, two, three. Three, four. And again. Two, three, four. Down, up, bounce. Down, up, bounce. Let's put four in a row. Are you ready? One, two, four in a row. Down, up, bounce. Down, up, bounce. Down. Doesn't really sound like a song just yet. It is an exercise right now, but hang out with this lesson because this is where it's going to go eventually. Let me just play for you, no holds barred, and then don't click away because I'm going to show you how to do this. <laughs> I added a few other types of strokes, but you can hear how that driving beautiful rhythm. George Formby used it. It's used in a lot of other styles of music too. Such a cool rhythm. So 
This first part of this lesson, let's conclude just by training our wrist to be very flexible, okay? One, two, four in a row. Down, up, bounce, down, up, bounce, down, up, bounce, down, up, bounce. Awesome. How are you feeling? Please let me know in the chat. If you got questions about anything, I, of course, want to answer your questions. Thanks for being here. There are links to download this um, and get many other perks and benefits as a member of the Patreon community. Please stick around for this entire lesson because we're going to be playing a gypsy jazz tune using a cool rumba groove, very similar to the calypso strum. This is going to be a ton of fun, so stick around. So what we did was we were practicing right there that first rhythm. You can hang with this over and over again. It's always a good idea to repeat things with mindfulness, meaning we're not just going to do them again and again and again and again. We're going to do them and repeating in a way where we're really paying attention, bringing some awareness to what we're doing, especially awareness to the body. We don't have to stroke the strings very hard to make this pattern. Now, friends, let's move on to the first example, the basic George Formby stroke. Now, you'll see that what we're going to add to this are, after we play down, up, down, down, up, down, we're going to play one more down, up. Before we add the accents and the musical example, let's just practice that pattern, okay? Hold down a C major chord. And I'm going to talk it out, I recommend, highly recommend that when you look at what you're doing, you say it. So if you can say it, you can play it, really trains your brain to be in command. Are you ready? I'll demonstrate. Down, up, bounce, down, up, bounce, down, up. All right, we're doing it slow, so it feels easy, so our hand feels easy. Let's do it together. One, two. Three, let's do it. Down, up, bounce, down, up, bounce, down, up. Let's do it again. Three, four. Down, up, bounce, down, up, bounce, down, up. One, two, three. I'm bouncing with my index. One, two, just with the index. Here we go. Down, up. Now we're going to do this and add the accents. Great questions coming in in the chat. Karen Silver, yes, I'm using the index finger. And you want to squeeze it just a little bit, not too much, but just enough that you can sense that you're creating a little guitar pick, so to speak, out of your tip of your finger and you bounce. All right, that squeeze will help you have some command over it. Debbie Schaefer is asking the difference between triplet and boom chucka, two very different rhythms. Boom chucka. Boom chucka boom. I hear that train a coming. It's rolling round the bend. That's a rhythm of one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. What we're doing here is a triplet. But Debbie, there is a there is a similarity, and that is when you're playing boom chucka, there is a little bounce. You can play boom chucka. Or you could just play boom with all the strings. And for more about boom chucka and trucker strums, check out my YouTube channel, um, Ukulele Zen, and just search Ukulele Zen, the trucker beat, and you'll find a lesson on the Johnny Cash strum, okay? Now, thanks for those questions. Thanks for hanging. Really glad you're here. If you're enjoying yourself so far, will you please click that like button, smash like. Really appreciate you being here. When we play this rhythm, notice how some numbers have circles. Those are the accents. So we really want to play those a little harder, a little more whip from the wrist, everything else a little softer. So we play. Down, 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 down. Okay. Notice how I'm saying it a little louder too. If you can say it, you can play it. In fact, your playing is often a very direct um, representation of the way we 
say it the way we hear it inside our head. So say it with me as you play. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down. Here we go. Down. faster eventually, we'll build up to that. Are you ready to practice with me? Okay, let's do this. Thank you for being here. If you're enjoying yourself, click that like button, share this video with your friends. We're going to, of course, use other chords, but just to exercise it, we'll hang on this. Let's take, pick up the tempo a little bit each time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Please pause and relax your hand because we are using muscles that we want to not overwork. We're doing this at 60 beats a minute. This pattern fits over four beats of time. Say with me. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. Four and whap. You ready? Come on, say it and clap or snap or smack your legs on the accents. Are you ready? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Get your whole body involved. And three and four and one and two and three. later. Let's just lock in. A few more times. Excellent, everybody. Now, this is, of course, meant to train your wrist to be loose. You, my friends, you have to bring that looseness into your wrist, all right? We need to cultivate that by stopping often and just asking ourselves, how loose is my wrist? Don't strum from, I would say, don't strum from the elbow, strum from a loose wrist. Come on, let's crank it up. 10 beats faster. And, and, four, and, one. Now we're just gonna roll. We're gonna go 70 beats a minute then 80, then 90, and pick it up. Come on, let's work out. You ready? Here we go. Come on, let's crank it up. Ten more beats. Hey, I see that Vancouver Island's in the house. Hey, Mark, hope you're doing well. And oh my gosh, Lena is in the house from Sweden. Thanks for coming. And Linda from my old uh, former stomping ground of Buffalo. Glad you're here. Thanks for joining in, everybody. 80 beats a minute. Remember, if you can say it, you can play it. So try to say it and join in. Two, three, four. Down. Now we're gonna keep going faster, but for those those of you the hot picking strummers, more advanced players, you can start to add the flick at the beginning and the 
power triplet that I showed in the lesson for the who, there's a link to that free video in the description down below. Watch. So there's all kinds of ways you can spice this up with the other strum tricks that you have. 90 beats a minute. Are you ready? All right, let's do this. It's going to sound like this. One and two and two. Get that. Get one and two and two. cool now we're gonna add the notes in a moment but come on let's do one more division of the beat higher 100 100 one two three here we go two three again Two, let's do it again. Cha, cha, cha. All right, friends, how are you feeling? Please let me know in the chat down below how you're doing. Couple of things about how to really practice this efficiently. When we were playing it very, very slowly, really invite you to feel the arm, really feel the wrist, feel that it's resting loosely, lightly on your instrument, okay? And then, as you pick up the speed, bring that loose feeling with you. We really want to connect deeply with what it feels like, so when we go faster, we can try less and stay connected. So as you go faster and faster, it's a good idea sometimes to then pause and return to that very slow pace so you can feel and connect with what it's like to be effortless. All right, Tim says he's feeling all right. Miss John is in the house. Glad you're here. So we want to keep on going. I'm so glad that you're here. I forgot to mention that there still are a few, uh, a few places available at this retreat, I know it's just a week away, but if you would like to join me, it's a fantastic time, maybe next year or some other place in the world. Five days of ukulele lessons at the amazing Omega Institute, which is a yoga center which offers daily movement classes, dance classes, it's part of their arts week. Amanda Palmer is gonna be there, you know, the punk rock goddess, Amanda Palmer, who wrote the ukulele song. She's gonna be there. So it's a fantastic time. There are links down below if you want to learn more. Now, let's get into how to apply this to the music. Of course, this lesson is meant to model a system of practice, right? You would hang with the slow stuff for a while. You'd pick up the pace. You could try all kinds of tricks. Maybe you want to mute the strings. You know, maybe you want to try other chords. But you get comfortable in that day by day, just getting more and more solid. Just because things are shown once doesn't mean they're internalized. We want to practice them. Guided repetition. Now what we have here is actually just the same exact pattern. But what we're going to do is we're going to add a very classic George Formby lick. George Formby played many other rhythms than this, but this is a really, really good jumping, uh, jump off point into the style of George Formby style playing. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow this tablature, but I'll just show you on my hands. I'm going to play down on the upstroke. We lift up the finger and then we bounce. And when we bounce, we try to get that G string to ring a little louder than what I just did. <laughs> So we go down, up, lift off, and bounce. 
really bring out that bing. And if you're on a low G, that's cool. Just let that low G ring out. So we're going down, up, bounce. Again. And then for the last down up, we play down up. What we eventually get is this melody across a string that's going. Right, if you're on a low G, that is where your G would be. Now, when we start to play this with the G7 chord, we're going to hold down the G7 chord. Same game. Okay, same exact pattern. Down, when you play up, I lift up that finger. I'm kind of consciously getting under the string just a little more. Just a little more under the string to let that note come out. And then I bounce. That's why it's good to have a little squeeze there. So let's do two of those in a row. Are you ready? Down, up, bounce. Down, up, bounce. And then the last two. Down, up. Yeah. All right, let's put it together. Two, three, four. Down, up, bounce. Down, up, bounce. Down, up. Let's practice that C again. Two, three, four. Down, up, bounce. Down, up, bounce. Down, up. Wonder bar. Now we do this. Down, up, bounce, down, up, bounce, down, up. It's all written on that tablature, okay? But it doesn't take too long for you to get the pattern under your fingers, okay? Down, up, we lift up that figure. Come on, let's do this together nice and slow. And then we're going to get into another example of the rumba pattern and apply it to this really fun gypsy jazz chord progression. How are you feeling so far, friends? Are you enjoying yourself? Please give this video a thumbs up if you are digging it. Share it with your friends on social media. Really grateful that you decided to spend a little time on your Sunday with me. This video will be here for you to practice with anytime, so please return to this video if you'd like to study this some more. Let's get in a flow with it, trying to play this two chord progression, okay? One, two, here we go. All right, well now we're going to do that again. I don't want to leave anybody in the dust. And after we do this, we're then going to extend it, okay? We're going to change the length of how many times we play C and how many times we play G7. But this is just the study, okay? This is just to get you going with the pattern, all right? Pete, I am going, Pete Garish is asking, hey Pete, down, up, 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 down, up. Yeah, I would say that's uh, not the pattern. You wanna play down, up, touch, down, up, bounce, down, up, all right? Great pattern. Also for blues fills. All right. So, yeah, I see some other comments coming in. Thank you, Nicole. Appreciate you being here. All right, now. So many ways it can be used, okay? Are you ready? Listo? Vamos. One and two and Keep that wrist loose. Here we go. Sweet. Hey, if that's fast for you, you just go. Extend the length of each chord progression now. Let's play two bars of C. Okay, so two repetitions of the pattern on C. 
we'll do four repetitions on G7, and then two on C, okay? So it's going to be two Cs, four Gs, two Cs. Let's do it. One, two, here we go. Second C. This is what it would sound like a little faster. We'll practice it slow again. I just want to play it faster so you can hear the music. This is a chord progression found in many old time jazz and ragtime tunes. And you put a little turnaround in there. That is the concept. Let's play it again, okay? Slow. One, two, duck, duck, duck. Thank you. Now, those of you who are studied in music will probably already be wondering, hmm, that's no longer a triplet. And you're right, it's not a triplet. I'm using a three-stroke pattern that we used as a triplet up here, and I'm using it in a syncopated jazz rhythm. All right, so I'm calling it a triplet stroke because it's really based on the three stroke pattern of down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, okay? How you feeling? This is a really, really important pattern to get and it's wicked, wicked fun. All right, I'd like to move on to the next part of the lesson. <laughs> we wanna practice it one more time, Carlos? All right, let's do it. Thank you for uh, hitting the like button, my friends and uh, for subscribing to this channel. I'm having a good time with you. One and two and three and four and five. Don't forget, it's so important just to say it and play it. You may like to write this and put it on a little post-it note. Keep it on your dashboard of your car. And when you get to a stoplight, put your car in park. You know, the car behind you will always let you know when it's time to move, okay? You can get many, many more minutes of happy rhythmic practice that way. Let's practice. One more time, then we're going to learn the rumba. Here we go. One and two and three and four and ready. Here we go. Lots of different ways you can play it. I'm going to take a break from this ukulele. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, feedback in the chat section. Really glad you're here. What I'd like to do now is to show you how this pattern of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two is very similar to a strum you already know. You already play the strum. I bet you do, especially if you were here for the um, 
for the session we did to honor Harry Belafonte because this is a strum pattern that's very similar to the calypso rhythm. Sue Lampman, just keep smiling. Thank you. Yeah, Gordon, glad you glad you're finding it helpful. Thank you so much, everybody. So now the Latin pattern. You'll see that down here it's written in two ways. There is a way to play the same pattern of accents using alternate strokes, always going down and up, and then you can use the down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up strum, okay? Lots of different ways this can be done. Let's hang out with this. Count, let's do number one. We'll play. Play it that slowly, just one more time, so we can train ourselves in the rhythm. Join in. One, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three. Super cool. Now notice something interesting about your hand here. When we were playing example one, the accents were on down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. And as you practice that, it's really helpful as you say it and you connect to the motion, start to memorize where the accents are. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. Well, down here, there's a different type of accent pattern. We're playing the accents, it's the same rhythm, but now the accents are gonna be down, up, down, down, up, down. Again, I'm doing it slowly so you can learn it, okay? And we can have a sense of ease as we learn. It doesn't help us to jam the information in with stress. It really doesn't help anything. So let's do it slowly, okay? And start to pay attention to those accents, okay? And this time, hey, let's play a D minor chord because this is gonna be um, part of this next song. Big, uh, big part of this song is the D minor chord. We'll come back to that in just a sec, right? Excuse me, accent patterns. It's slow, yes. Slow and hopefully sultry and inviting to the ear. If you want to play this pattern with a down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up stroke. All right. Do you feel the benefits of this, keeping your wrist loose? Being forced to play two down strokes in a row really makes your hand have to be fast. All right, now you can play this in either way. You may like to play the alternating strokes. And after we play this chord progression, I'm gonna add one last thing into this pattern and that is using muting, left hand muting. All right, left hand muting can be tricky. So I wanna talk about it and share a little practice on it, okay? If you want to learn the other triplet strokes that I'm sharing in previous lessons, there are links in the description down below, and there's also a link down below to get a printable version of what you're seeing here and a whole bunch of other membership perks at the links down below. Thanks to everybody who's a patron and supporting this channel. I truly am so grateful to you all, but I'm glad you're here either way. Let's jam. Let's keep that groove going and play this chord progression. We'll do it just a little faster this time. Let's kick it at 100. I 
I'm using the alternate stroke and I'm going to play through this chord progression. Every time you see one of those percentage signs, it means to repeat the previous measure. Are you ready? A two, a one, two, one, two, here we go. click away because I'm going to explain the chords and some embellishments. This is a song that I used to play like 18 times a week <laughs> with my old gypsy jazz band. This is called Basso Dorado. It has a very good driving rhythm. Now there's a lot more um, detail, a lot more hipper nuance. Can I just play it for you? And I'm going to even record this into my looper so we can use it later as a reference. A one, two, one, two, here we go. Oh, you can follow along at this tempo if you like. I'll just go through the whole thing, then I'll show you what I'm doing. One, two, one, two, three, four. Oops, excuse me. Hey, <laughs> hey, technical issue. Let's do it again. One, two, one, two, three. So that's just a little jamming for you. And the sounds like the loop got a little bit distorted, but it's a clear enough example for us. What we have here is a Latin jazz groove in A, A, B, A form. And I'll show you some of the other chord embellishments that I played. As we're playing the groove, let's first hang out with the first concept of muting occasionally. You can play down. down. 
Now this is an option. As you're playing the chord progression, you can mute everything except the accents. Down. 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 All right, if you were playing the previous pattern, Now all I'm doing is I'm just shutting the sound off. So find this D minor chord, and then just with this hand, shut the sound off. You can make a game out of it by lifting your hand off the strings, and that forces this hand to stop the strings. The motion is just a little one, okay? The hand just deflates a little bit. All right, the second chord we used was E7. Again, just mute. I was adding an embellishment of flattening my finger out to include that F. An easier way to do that, perhaps, would be to play your E7 like this. Adding that F, I've changed the E7 into an E7 flat 9. The next chord after that is E minor 7 flat 5. It's a mouthful, but really all it is is open 2, open 1, and then to E to A7. And on the A7, I added a little embellishment. Again, adding that F at the First fret creates an A7 sharp 5. You can also add the B flat at the first fret of the first string to create an A7 flat 9. Okay, so that is a minor key progression. I'm playing D minor, E7, Minor seven flat five. A seven could be played like this. If you like. Please work out whatever fingering works for you. Now the rest of the progression continues. You can see that the B section. Uh, the, excuse me, the A, second A section, A prime, is D minor to E7, E minor 7 flat 5, A7 to D minor. So it's almost the same thing, it just doesn't have the A7 at the very end, okay? Before we move on to the next one, and we're going to groove and we're going to play this, I just want to share with you another way for you fancy chord players. When you play A, E minor 7 flat 5, to A7, you can also play it up here. And what that is, is taking this chord progression and moving it up to a new voicing. What is this voicing? Third fret, fourth fret, third fret, fifth fret. And then the pinky moves down and the index finger moves down to play your A7. Right, there's lots of ways that it can be done. Next, we get to the B section. The B section begins with another minor key progression, A minor 7 flat 5 which can be played with all four fingers, second fret, third fret, third fret, third fret, to D7, to G minor. And then from there, very similar to the rest. E7, see right there? E minor 7 flat 5 to A7. Let me zoom in on my hands so you can get these chords. A minor 7 flat 5. It looks like the same as C minor 6. You know, you know why? Because it is the same chord. A minor 7 flat 5. 
sometimes called A, my, A half diminished, is the same exact chord as C minor 6. And then from here, we move to D7. If you add this finger here, you can add a flat 9 to the D7 chord. I like to use this bar personally. You do whatever is comfortable for you. And then to G minor. And then I did something more advanced. I put a descending chromatic melody inside the G minor chord. Okay, so I play G minor. Slide that ring finger down. That's a G minor with a major seven. I flatten the finger there. That's G minor seven. And then I lift this up. And I'm playing G minor six. I know this can get confusing, especially if you're new to music theory because you're looking at the shape I'm holding and you might be thinking, that's not G minor six, that's E minor seven flat five. That's the chord we just played up there. Yes, it is. It's the same collection of notes, okay? Chord synonyms. The minor seven flat five and minor six relationship is one that is in every key, okay? So those chords are substitutions for one another. But I digress. Without getting too complex in the music theory, let's jam. If you want to mute, you would play. You don't have to mute the entire time. You can mute just for a special effect. Let's try this entire chord progression together. Really glad you're here. Cindy, pineapple, pineapple, apple. Thanks for reminding me. How could I have forgotten? Yes, this rhythm is pineapple, pineapple, apple, pineapple, pineapple, apple. All right, let's jam. Oh, one, two, one, two, three, four. Second section. B section. You made it all the way through, excellent. Take your hands off your instrument and give yourself a pat on the back. This is advanced stuff. Thanks for hanging with the entire arc of this lesson. We're gonna do this again, okay? There are so many ways that you can embellish this by using fan strokes and by using, you know, just getting creative with the way you want to accompany it. Did you notice I was playing mute, 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 let it ring. different things you can do. All right. Are you having fun? I am having a lot of fun with you. Oh my gosh, look, the fun meter. It's in the, it's really pinning now. Can we do this? Come on, let's jam. I'm going to try to make an, a better, cleaner loop so we can play along with it. So glad that you're here. Please check the links down below for more information and to sign up uh, for my mailing list. If you're new to this channel, I put out lots of content at this channel, Ukulele Zen. It's all available for you. Just go click that thing at the bottom of this video. Check out the other videos there and I hope you'll subscribe to this channel. Almost at 100,000 subscribers. I can't believe it, but uh, really excited that you're here. Let's do it. Take it easy with this. We'll just play it nice and mellow. This is a hot tune that sometimes is played very fast. If you look up Bossa Dorado, Gypsy Jazz, you're gonna, you're gonna see some um, 
fast playing with some of these some of these tunes, but we're gonna do a slow, sultry version. Okay. So I'm using the alternating stroke, but you could if you want, okay? Here we go. And a one, two, a one, two, three, four. Last time, let's try something else. Watch, just arpeggio.
everybody. And you can end with a colorful D minor 6 chord. Yeah. Just adding your pinky here. So there we go, just dipping our toes into the world of uh, a gypsy jazz bossa. I uh, presented a webinar some time ago on Django Reinhardt's style. We uh, covered one tune deeply. Maybe we can have another session like that if you'd like. I'd be happy to create another program like that where we get into maybe three or four different Django Reinhardt songs and we'll learn some melodies and some licks. That finger picking pattern I was using, and then we're gonna we're gonna end with this. But I'm just using the same rhythm, but I'm playing thumb. Index, middle, thumb, index, middle, thumb, index. So it could end with thumb index or thumb middle. Same idea of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. Right, eventually you get some speed. How are you feeling, friends? I hope that you had a good time with this lesson. Appreciate you spending some time with me. Please return to this um, because there was a lot shared, not only about this and showing you some chord variations, but also uh, this basic, uh, not so basic, <laughs> triplet strum pattern. It takes a little bit of practice, but this would be, you know, kind of wrapping up the trilogy of triplet lessons. The first two are in the description down below. All right, two really great power triplet patterns, and then this, which has a lot of cool applications. There's always more that we can add to something, but I hope that you found this to be a really good foundation, plenty to study with this lesson tutorial. When you're adding embellishments to your chords, okay, very nice to put them on the up strum sometimes. So you, f you fool around with that, uh, and as they say, just muck around, you know? Just see what works, and when you find something that you like, try to find a way to write it down so you remember it, or do it enough times that it just goes into your memory and into your neural circuits, your muscle memory, so to speak. Um, I'm really, really glad um, that, that you're here. Sonny, you will be able to keep up at Omega. Omega is, uh, the Omega retreat is a very, very friendly time. Um, it's very different in some ways than, um, your average music camp. Uh, we explore meditation. We explore very easy ways of getting into music and practical things that I've been using over my lifetime to make music study more joyful and more easy. So, um, all levels are welcome, okay? Randy, glad you're here. Thanks so much. Yes, Terry, we can get into some more Django. Angela, I'm glad you're here. Thanks, everybody. Oh, wow, George is here from Perth, Western Australia. My goodness. Thanks for, uh, <laughs> thanks for joining in. It's a very different time of day there. Um, so uh, appreciate you being here. And uh, if you have any issues with the download at Patreon, just message me via Patreon. You should be able to download it just fine. Make sure your, your web browser is up to date and you'll be able to download this and all the other perks. I'm so glad that you're here. Thanks again for joining me. Hope you'll share this video with your friends and return to it. I'll be back the first, uh, the first Sunday of August with another live stream tutorial for you like this one. And of course, other live stream tutorials are available throughout the month and lots of other goodies for members at the Patreon community. All right, wishing you a wonderful day, many years of good health and happy music making. Wishing you and your family all the best from mine to yours, many blessings. I hope that you are having a wonderful, wonderful day. Happy summertime. Look forward to making music with you again sometime soon. All the best. Thank you so much.